Hey, so since we're going to cross the border with our friends next week, I figured I would tell you guys all about how to cross the border quickly, easily, and safely, and make sure that you know everything there is to know about crossing borders. I'm Emily, and I've been traveling for four years with my husband, Danny, my cat, Graham, and my dog, Sombrita. I want to tell you guys how I've been crossing these borders all the way down here to Argentina from Alaska. This is my 24th fourth border crossing. Believe me, on my first, I was so nervous. So, I'm here to help. Before we cross any border while we're in a semi-big city, we make sure to research what we have to do to get the pets into the next country. Usually, we have to go to a vet and they get a health certificate. They check to make sure their rabies vaccines and their yearly vaccines are still up to date. Sometimes they do anti-flea and anti-internal um, parasite medicine. And then they write that down as well to make sure that the next country knows that these pets are safe to bring into the country. Those health certificates cost usually around $20. $20, $25 each. After we get the health certificate, we head right to a government agency and we'll start the import and export forms. These are the forms that we need to cross into the next country with the pets. We basically have to do this every single border. For Chile and Argentina, the forms last 60 days so we can cross in and out of each of those countries with the same form, which is very nice. <laughs> After we get all the pet paperwork, we're heading towards the border and along the way we might stop to throw away our trash, make sure there's no more vegetables in the van, and we're also going to fill a backpack with all of the paperwork that we need. My first thing I put in the backpack is one bag that holds our passports, our original registration and title, vaccine cards, stuff like that. We not only have a vaccine card for COVID, but we also have one for yellow fever. You've had to get vaccines to cross borders for years. <laughs> and also in that bag is our current TIP or temporary vehicle import permit. The next thing I'm putting inside our bag is a binder full of copies. So this is copies of our passports, licenses, registration, title, what else? The pet paperwork, the pet import and export forms. I also copy rabies vaccine form and if we need insurance or something like that from the previous country, I usually make a copy of that. If you feel uncomfortable with handing out your title or registration every time you go and cross the border, you can make a colored copy and they might not tell the difference. Just make sure the copy looks semi-official. Sometimes if you keep handing out your original, they get all crinkly and they might get ripped or something like that. It starts to get sketchy for me, especially with the title. And this is a, that's a very important paper and I really don't want it to get ruined. <laughs> the last thing I'm putting in this backpack is a folder full of expired paperwork, which I don't think a lot of people do, but I am really nervous about throwing away these papers that we might need down the road. I think three borders ago, I had to take out the pet paperwork and show her that, yes, I had this paper, is this what you want, or is this okay? And she said that the valid paper is okay. It was nice that I still had the expired one to say, these are the same ones from Argentina, ones from Chile, but <laughs> please accept this one. <laughs> okay, we're at the border, we're going to cross. So first we go past all of the trucks, there's gonna be a billion semi-trucks, to drive right past them go up to the first like sedan SUV kind of car that you see and park behind them. You're, you're going to get out and walk from here, from USA to Canada and also USA to Mexico. I think we could stay in our cars. <laughs> Those are the exception. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is stamp out of the country that you're in. So you're heading over to immigration. It say, might say Migración. You'll get that stamp. Usually this, the line is for people going into the country. After the migration, you're going to head over to the Arwana, which is the Customs and they're going to take your old temporary vehicle import permit. They will take it 100% They're going to take it if you feel nervous about this make a copy of it so that you have another in your records Usually you don't need it again. Okay. Well now it's time to cross the physical border head back into your car and Drive across this could be five minutes. I've been to one where it was an hour because it was a dirt road So it just depends on where you are sometimes you don't even have to move That's really nice when they have the same building and you just have to walk across to another part of it. <laughs> so you're going to cross the physical border now. After you drive across the border, you're going to go to the migration to stamp into the new country. Such an exciting 
time to not be worried about your visa. You know you have at least 30 to 90 days. You can enjoy the new place that you're going into. I love getting a new stamp in my passport. We're going to head over to the Adwana and you're going to get a new temporary vehicle import permit or TIP from the customs officer. For this, you have to give them the driver's passport and also either your registration or your title. You need the plate number. Then they'll just type it into their system and you should be on your way to the next little window. <laughs> the next window is where you declare what you have in the car. One of us writes on this paper that we have animals that we're bringing into the country. Sometimes they look at it and they don't care. Sometimes they look at it and they're like, oh no. <laughs> but we always have the papers so we're not really worried. If they ask for the papers, that's great. We have them and if they don't, that's great as well. We don't have to do more work. <laughs> you have to go back to your vehicle and bring it up to the inspection site. Sometimes they keep your temporary vehicle import permit until you bring your van through so then they can sign off on it as they inspect your vehicle. This is a step that is a little nerve-wracking, not because you're bringing anything bad into the country, but just like someone's coming in and invading your space. They're looking through your stuff, they think that you're doing something wrong, and really you're just trying to travel around. Not a fun time. <laughs> what I do is usually just stay out of the way. We open the side door so that they can just look inside, or if they want to get up and get inside. Uh, I usually have the dog on the leash and keep a really close eye on the cat, make sure that he's somewhere safe. He doesn't really go outside when someone else is in the van. He gets a little nervous, but also just sits and waits until they leave. If they want to look through your stuff, that's fine. Just make sure you don't have any vegetables in the van before you get to the border. If they find any vegetables or, you know, uncooked beans or meat or cheese, they're going to take it, but I haven't heard of anyone actually getting any fines. Just threaten people with fines. So after the inspection is complete, you are free to go into this new country. Enjoy your time. Well, thank you guys so much for coming to see how we cross borders, our system, and I hope that you learned a lot from this. I've been wanting to share my knowledge about coming down all the way down to Argentina for a long time now, and I just want to let everyone know that it's so possible for anyone to do this. It's not as crazy as you think. Borders are just another piece of paperwork you have to do to get on with your amazing travels. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to let me know in the comments, like, and subscribe. If you want to support us a little bit more, head over to our Patreon. We'll see you guys next time.